Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, knitting and cross-stitch, what I'm reading and watching, a little bit about self-care, productivity, and keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so grab yours, and let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 101. Hello friends, it's good to be back. My plans for doing a podcast last weekend, which would have been after two weeks, were foiled by an unexpected trip home from the college boy, and um, so no regrets there. It was nice to have him home for a little unexpected trip. So this is episode 101, and I just wanted to thank you guys so much for your enthusiasm for episode 100, where I did a Fat Quarter Shop giveaway, and that that winner has already been um, notified and received the gift card. So um, that was very generous at the Fat Quarter Shop, and so I'd asked to enter the giveaway to um, tell me what your favorite segment of the podcast is. And man, that was so much fun to read. Um, a lot of people said they obviously they come for the knitting or they come for the quilting, but um, actually really enjoy the TV show and book recommendations and and things like that. And I, I what I really came away with was that people really like the mixed content and thank goodness I if it was just a quilting podcast (laughs) I wouldn't have as much to say (laughs) let's just say that so thank you for everyone everybody left just the nicest the nicest um, comments and every single one of them really really made my day so here we are we're um, it's uh, April 23rd when I'm recording this and it is a beautiful Southern California day once again my husband and I went hiking this morning And um, it was beautiful, just kind of mid 70s and or even low 70s while we were hiking. And everything here in California is still very, very green. Um, I don't know how much longer that green's going to last because we have not had rain for a while. And it's supposed to be this really this super bloom for wildflowers. And we just are not catching it in the places that we're hiking, but still absolutely um, gorgeous just enjoying enjoying being outside again because i'm not used to being you know inside we had such a rainy winter (laughs) um what else is going on um i am going to sweden in june i am so excited i'm going to stockholm this is a work trip um So I explained on, I think it was the last podcast, I don't know if I did a great job of explaining um, that I I do marketing um, for a group of people that all sell the same very technical manufacturing software. (laughs) No idea. I want to say I have no idea how I got into this, but I know exactly how I got into it. It was my little internship job in college and I never left, Um, except I took a... uh, a 15 year maternity break. <laughs> but anyways, the um, the meeting, the reseller meeting for this software is in Sweden this year, which is very unusual. And um, I it was in Vegas last year and I bowed out of going at the last minute. No regrets for a million reasons, one of which is that it turned out to be a COVID super spreader event. But um, Sweden. Now I can get behind that. So I'm going to go, I'll be gone for like nine days in mid-June and my husband is going to kind of come at the tail end of the meeting and then we're going to spend three solid days exploring Stockholm, which is a city of 14 islands and 50 bridges. It's an archipelago, which I just no idea no idea my daughter who went there for like a weekend when she was um living in oslo as a student i was like you never mentioned this and she's like oh is it really i mean i knew there was a lot of water but I never <laughs> so it'll be very interesting so i've, I, I've got a a rough itinerary of the things that you need to see including obviously the abba museum um and you know what I actually did is I did a, just light Googling um, and stumbled upon some uh, travel blogs, which is exactly how I planned our activities for our trip to Italy last year is, you know, travel blogs are amazing, but I would like to be a travel blogger. Wouldn't that be a good gig? Um, but you know what else I did? Once I had kind of an idea of some things, I t- <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're all familiar with chat GPT, right? The whole AI thing that's sweeping the world. Well, I typed into chat GPT, plan me a three-day 
um, vacation in Stockholm. And darn it, if it did not do it and says, you know, like start here, go visit this, have lunch in this area, then in the afternoon do this, have a cup of coffee here. <laughs> it was like oddly specific. So um, yeah, there's a there's a, a, a non-terrifying use for... Uh, <laughs> for her artificial intelligence. So anyway, so that's coming up. I'm, I've also got a work trip planned um, for a week in May. So um, both of those together are going to give me some some stress in terms of um, getting all my normal work done while being out of pocket for those periods of time. So we'll see. Um, but just, uh, yeah, super exciting. What we're going to do vacation-wise with the kids, no idea, no plans. So sorry, kids. We'll have to figure that one out later. All right, I feel like I've got a lot to talk about, so let's move on. But before we do, as usual, I would like to thank the Fat Quarter Shop for their generosity in sponsoring this podcast. Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop shop for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and as we know, even cross-stitch supplies. Well, right now, the Fat Quarter Shop is having their spring cleaning sale so you can get up to 50 percent off of tons of yardage and so much more i actually went in um, to that section and scrolled through it there's quilting patterns cross stitch patterns notions of every type and obviously lots and lots of fabric that is 50 percent off so definitely go check it out i'll put a link in the show notes um, or just google it <laughs> you know definitely take advantage of this 50 percent off sale at fat quarter shop as usual, I totally forgot to talk about my tea, but my tea today is actually kombucha, which I count as tea because it's just fermented tea. So I just realized that, well, come June, I will have been making kombucha for three years now. It was something I started during the pandemic. I've gone through periods of time where I've I've just let it sit and not do anything and then started, you know just emptied out the the really tart kombucha <laughs> that's left in the bottom of the of the vessel and started over again um i've still you know, you know i'm still working on that same scoby that i bought in june of 2020 and um I've, there's a few things that i do differently now one is um I'm not as big into doing the whole second ferment on it. So before when I would, you know, the kombucha gets to a certain point, then you bottle it and then you can put like, a, I've put like blueberries and raspberries or a little bit of fruit juice. And by a little, I mean like an ounce or so. And then you um, let it sit in the closet for like three or four days. And while that, uh, those, that yeast and bacteria then, really eat up the rest of that sugar you just ingested which gives it more carbonation um, and I just the whole bottling process is not that fun I mean it's not that big of a deal but mostly what I do now like right now the what I'm drinking is just like straight so I have I make it in a big vessel that has a spout a spigot on it and so as it's getting to be the right amount of, of tartness, I just start drinking on it for a few days. <laughs> and then when it gets to the right thing, then sometimes I just empty it all out into a big mason jar. Or when I was at, Ke at Ikea, I got two, maybe one liter bottles with the stopper on top. Um, and I've noticed that I don't think they're really as tight as my true kombucha bottling stoppers but um, it's better than it just being like in a jar because the only problem with that it still tastes good to me um, it just loses its carbonation so so anyway so that's what I'm just drinking stuff that's a little bit lightly carbonated right now and um, when Ben comes home for the summer I think I'll, I'll start bottling it a little bit um, more with a little bit of juice because you know like a little blueberry uh, kombucha is so good it's just it's just more work <laughs> so um, so anyways that's my kombucha story all right now really on to the quilting so the most exciting thing that I have to talk to you about quilting related is I did an uh, un I want to say unintentional an unplanned complete sewing room declutter in the last couple weeks this started with um you know one of my big plans for the year is to um redo our two kids bedrooms we have three children but there's only two kids bedrooms um to, to reflect our our life now which means the you know the kid posters need to come down the, they need to be painted we need new furniture um 
And so I'm, I'm getting really getting going on that uh, project finally. And part of that was taking um, in the boys' room. They we have these Billy bookcases that are like 42 inches tall or something, kind of a natural wood look. Where the ones in Chloe's room, where, where I'm recording this are the tall ones and they were white and she took like the center one in both cases I did like a wider center bookcase and then two narrower ones on each side I just like that look and so when she moved out she took the center the boys didn't take any so I thought I could take all three of the boys bookcases and put them down in my sewing room which is the dining room I was going to put them behind um you know when I'm sitting at the dining room table I'm looking out and uh, feng shui they would call it in the command position I'm looking out into the room towards the front door and behind me is normally um, the ironing board so I can just get up and turn around and iron well I've been wanting to experiment this will all come together in a second I promise with this um, thing I've seen with Lori Holt set up which is to have the sewing the the um, ironing board on the right and kind of low so you can just kind of pivot over there and iron a block and then go back to sewing now um, Francis used to always say that sitting is knitting and quilting is moving because you have to get up to iron so I've just turned quilting into sitting too (laughs) but um, so so that's what I did and I put two of the bookcases so it's a little wonky that there's a wide one and then there's a a shorter a narrower one next to it Um, but that's all I could fit without interfering with the ironing board that's right there so I I just thought oh my gosh that's going to give me so much space Um, because I just took out this real random piece of furniture that I had a bunch of stuff on it was too deep so I, I just thought it was going to create so much space and man it filled up so fast <laughs> it filled up so fast so um as I was I was trying to like figure out well how do I want to use this I want to use it you will see it when you walk in so I kind of I wanted it to have some cute things on it and I'll take a picture you know my sewing space is is nothing spectacular it's very functional and it's I want to say it feels temporary you know it's like only been this way roughly for 10 years but um, someday I hope to move directly above this the dining room into this loft which is now it's our music loft so it's got drum a drum kit in there and a whole lot of guitars and things like that and someday that will go away I assume so and and then I'm gonna move up there but for now this is what I have so I, I, I was a little overwhelmed like what do I do um, I, I have sewing stuff st- in that area in the dining room and then I have um, just random stuff crammed under the closet in this closet that's under our stairs that is so hard it's so disorganized in there that it's just hard to get things in and out so and I had lost touch with what was in there so there's that and then I have a another area in the family room where we have a built-in some cabinets there and I have um, some some stuff in there too so I was like I kind of need I felt like I just needed to grab everything and just dump it all on the table and figure it out but I'm glad I didn't because what I did do is inspired by my friend Vicki over at my creative corner three back in January she did the Karen Brown 2023 sewing room declutter challenge now Karen Brown is from just get it done quilts which is a fabulous YouTube channel she's amazing um, and oh just also an aside here if you watch her what did I buy at QuiltCon episode she bought that same little shaker sewing caddy that I did except for she was smart enough to buy it early and get the ones that had the magnets built into the the handle which I'm still regretting that I was so indecisive there anyways we're back to sewing room declutter so Karen has this 21 day challenge oh I was going to bring it up on the I'm going to wing it and each day she has you just like do like kind of one category where I was just going to I felt like just going Marie Kondo style right? just dump it all out well I you kind of do that but you just do it one category at a time so the first day first of all I'm not following directions here it did not take me 21 days um, you're supposed to work like no more than 30 minutes a day and I don't know last weekend I worked for like three hours but I just kind of you know I get into the zone that's just the way I am 
So like the first day was easy and, and some of these categories were not hard for me. So that's why I just kept going. Um, you just get the garbage out. You just, you know, it, she's doing this um, right at the beginning of the year where we're just coming off the holidays where a lot of times people's sewing rooms, you know, you've got a gift wrapping stuff in there or maybe it was a guest room or whatever. So you just go through, you get rid of the trash. That part wasn't a problem for me. But the brilliant part of what she does is on that first day, in addition to get your um get rid of any trash in there is to go get your sewing machine if it's not already in there and get it set up and find a project that you want to work on during this challenge and like you know get yourself get get a sewing space set up because your reward for doing your day's work is to sew and I, I thought that was really smart because it is in these declutters sometimes you can make such a huge mess that you can't even use that space but she's very adamant to not do that and whatever day two was the second part about that of that day was to clean and oil your sewing machine, which I thought, again, was really smart. Okay, I seem to have developed the hiccups right in the middle of <laughs> this podcast, so this is going to be interesting. Um, but she also tells you to get a like a spiral notebook or some kind of notebook and just like jot down anything like, you know, your monkey brain comes up with, uh, you know, like that might derail you. Because as you're going through these things, um, projects you know, that you had forgotten about resurface or you're like, oh, I, I have this fabric, you know, I've got this great idea now. So you just do not stop with your doing, just, just write those things down so that you can come back to that later. And I thought that again was, um, was pretty smart. I actually then had a second page of all the feelings I was going through that I wanted to share with you guys. The first one was that I did feel overwhelmed by going, okay, I'm going to, um, go through every piece of fabric, every notion, you know, everything that I have here, I'm going to go through. And I do not have bike. I have plenty, but I, by comparison, I know I don't have as much as a lot of people do. And so I just kept thinking, I'm so glad that I do not have, you know, all those sewing rooms that you admire on YouTube or on Pinterest or whatever. I just realized if that stuff, if, if I really own that much stuff, I really would be overwhelmed. So without checking you know some of the categories were you know one day you just went through all your scissors and rotary cutters anything that cuts you just get them all together you you know I took the opportunity that day to change the blade on my rotary color cutter because I knew that it was skipping and so I I did that and then just to make sure that you have the appropriate scissors where you need them are your you know, rotary cutters near your uh, cutting mat. Do you have, if you hand sew, do you have scissors in there? Do you have it in a little zipper pouch or whatever? Just making sure that you have what you need and you know what you have and where it is. And that was a big problem for me. It's just like, I, especially with the hand sewing stuff, which I haven't done a lot of hand piecing for a while, but um, I had, you know, certain projects, I would have things with those projects, but I also have a hand sewing pouch and, and it, it's just easy to figure out like, where, where do I keep the needles and where's that favorite pair of snips? So it was good to round everything up and identify it. And that was really the number one thing through this whole challenge is to be reminded of what you have. And I, I think of Diane in Denmark, my favorite fly lady guru and that is part of why she wants you know that's part of the zone cleaning when you're going through your kitchen once a month and and you know wiping out drawers and things like that you are reminded of what you have and and if you remember that you have something you are more likely to use it um so same thing with um thread and of course as i was going through things i'm i'm creating donations so i've got a couple local quilt guilds around here and this is i you know this isn't the first time i've done this obviously i did a huge declutter during covid um but you know i just so i just kept putting aside things that would be very useful especially if they do a lot of charity quilting i have like a ton of green thread i'm never going to use all this green thread let me pass it on so um when it came to the, okay the other the brilliant thing about this also is she doesn't get to fabric till like day 20 <laughs> of a 21 day um, challenge she has you go through books and patterns and and things like that and and really figure out how much space you have and you can go, okay, this is the space I have for books. Do I have too many books? And I kind of realized like that the bookshelves that were behind me that I had moved in from the boys' room, um, I was going to keep my crafting books in a different place. And again, those were spread out in a few different places. So now they're just in the book, not behind me, not in that room, because I want things that 
will be handy for me to grab while I'm sewing there. It's not, a you know, the the rest of the bookshelf, it's just across the room in our normal bookshelf. So that was good to kind of realize, okay, I don't want to waste any of any space here except for stuff that I am, you know, actively, you know, want to grab. Um, and that came in uh, to play later when I realized how much like interfacing and fusible web and that kind of stuff I have. And I had that on a, in a, basket in there. I'm just like, I don't use that very often. So ultimately I put that in a, I was going to try to get everything into this one room. It didn't happen. And that was one thing I decided as long as it's all together and I know where it is, then it can be more out of sight. Um, and she has you go through even pins and stuff like notions one day. And that was a, that was one on my marathon day. I, cause I just have all these little baskets. I have no drawers in my sewing area. And that I realize is kind of a mistake or it's not a mistake. I mean, it is what it is. I'm sewing at a dining room table. Um, but, um, so I have baskets full of things and that those had gotten really out of control and I didn't know where anything was. So I, that was, I just was inspired to dump all that out, figure out notions. So that's another day of hers. Um, pre-cuts or another one. And, um, I don't have a lot of those. And what was nice is, is when I did find those kind of things, I had kind of, I have a little decorative glass jar that I have all my mini charm packs in. Um, first, I put those mini charm packs in my new scrap system, of which I have one and a half and three or three and a half. <laughs> the three, that one is a little fuzzy for me. One and a half strips or squares and three or three and a half and then two and a half and five. Um, so that's, you know, charm packs and mini charm packs and jelly rolls. And one and a half is a honey bun, which I actually had some leftovers of a honey bun. So when I found those things or a, a what's it called? A layer cake that I had cut in half that goes in the five thing. So I just was able to take a lot of these random little bits of fabric and file them into my new scrap system, which was nice. And I do have a big, pretty basket full of fabric that I need to trim into those sizes that I, when I went through, finally went through my fabric, I just pulled out all those little random things and said, you know, that are very small, less than half a fat quarter and, and threw them in a pile to kind of process during some sort of mindless TV show watching someday. Um, but I went and got my fabric from all the different places and um, I broke up bundles. I had some bundles and they were tucked away and, I was, and I've had them for five plus years and I'm just obvious because I wanted to keep them together. It's so tempting to want to keep bundles together and um, I finally just broke them up and filed them by color because I'm just like, you're not using them like this. Um, let's just be honest. I didn't have a lot of them and a lot of them were sort of gifts from fabric companies for doing different things. And um, so that felt good. I felt like, okay. And then if, if they weren't my style, then, you know, I, I was passing them on. So on my day of fabric, what was on day? It was a week of going through fabric and I did it by, first of all, I just got all the fabric together and um, then just started going by color. And I did, I had no idea that I had so much in the low volume and, or things printed on white, <laughs> not necessarily low volume. I might, you know, but it, it's, it's its own little category. So I have a lot of that, but I don't have enough of, or I'm out of any big purchases of, you know, like uh, Moda 97 or 98 or Kona snow, that kind of the, that real solid background whites. I need to order some of those. That was pretty obvious. And, um, and just every day I just went through another color and I kind of panicked and I thought I have too much fabric. I don't have enough baskets for this. Um, cause I just, I didn't buy anything to store it. Um, I just, I, I don't believe in throwing away baskets. <laughs> so I have like little sets of two matching baskets and then I would just kind of file them in there like Marie Kondo style. Um, and got rid of a lot of stuff that, I mean, the more I panicked, the more I started getting, being able to release things. So, um, so I've got a friend that I'm going to, I've shown her a lot of it. I'm going to squeeze as much as I can into a, a, uh, flat rate, large, you know, um, box from the post office and, and send some of that off to her. And, and it felt good to get rid of some things. Now, here are some interesting things. 
that I got rid of. So for years, years, if you've been around, I've been talking about these adorable Santa panels that I have, and then I was going to cut them up and turn them into that um, pattern by orange dot quilts called only one I pulled them out and they're really cute they are not my style anymore I bought them over 10 years ago and even though I mean it was a little hard it was a little hard and I offered them the phone to my friend and as soon as I offered them I was like oh should I have done that but you know what I'm never going to do anything with them and so that whole you'll never hear me talk about that Christmas quilt that's on my list of things to do because you know what I have let that go <laughs> it's gone I also had these Christmas fabrics that were very bright like a very bright red and a very kind of um, not neon green but that real um more like a lemony yellow spring green kind of thing I'm like that those are not my Christmas those are not my Christmas colors um and I used to have all my Christmas fabrics in one little section um and I just filed them in I just filed them in by color and maybe I'll live to regret that but I wasn't going to my Christmas stash to make things anymore so um it, it was it really wasn't doing me any good so so yeah so that um was all very cathartic the other thing that I came across that was hard to deal with um is I have a, I had a little basket of things in baggies that are the end of a project, uh, leftovers from a project. So years ago from um, poppy cotton fabrics, I made this very cute, it's on the table right now, um, a flying geese table runner. And for the longest time, I didn't know what I was going to do they, when they asked me to sew with that. And I made a ton of half square triangles that I ultimately didn't do anything with. I've got this whole bag of half square triangles of this absolutely adorable fabric. So I just feel like and I actually have a very similar situation with some Bonnie and Camille fabric where I have like a gazillion half square triangles. And I just feel like I should do something with that. And I always think that, oh, someday when you, you know, you're not really sure what you want to sew, just pull those out and put them up on the design wall. And, you know, there's obviously so many types of quilts you can do with half square triangles. And so um, I had forgotten about them, which is why it's good to go through things. And... Um, now they're back on my radar. There's a few other things of that ilk in that basket that I realized, no, I'm really never going to do anything with this. So I was able to get through with them. And I've decided that I think that doing this um, sewing room declutter thing once a year is, is a really good idea. And I think it will go really quickly as, as we go on. And if I haven't done anything with those um, half square triangles, then it's going to be time to get rid of them. So I'm just going to give myself, I've had them for years definitely going to, um, you know, give myself a year and then move on. What else happened here? Um, oh, okay. So I got my sewing machine set up and I'm like, okay, this is really cool. And I'm, I'm, I'm making my last couple blocks for my granny square quilt. That's what I was going to work on. I'm going to finish this up. And then, um, back in December, I think I talked about how I was sewing and my sewing machine just kind of stopped working. It was this whole intermittent problem. I put it away for the holidays. And when I brought it back out, I magically started working again. Well, it started having that problem again. So I immediately took it off to the, the sewing machine store. And of course, when they sewed with it, it was not having that problem, but we did give it the full service and now it sews like butter, let me tell you. So I have a Juki, um, the 2200 QVP, which is just like the, uh, very much like the, what's it called? The 2010 and the 20, the 2000 that everybody loves, kind of a cult favorite. Love, 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 love this machine. Um, and for some reason, I was Googling things and I came across a video that I will put in the show notes that was like, um, like 10 things you should really know about your Juki. And it turns out I, I was slightly threading it wrong <laughs> that I didn't know about. And it just, it's like a, a shop that sells Jukis, a Juki Junkies is I think maybe the name of the YouTube channel. And I just learned so much. So that actually was really fun. So I feel like not only is my sewing space organized, my sewing machine's in good working order. And um, yeah, so that's been, yeah, I, I, I just highly, highly, um, recommend you know that little process even if it do, you don't do it in 21 days or whatever the the method was really good wow i did not mean to talk about that for that long 
<laughs> so thank you for indulging me. Just a couple other quilty things I want to say is I went to the Ventura Modern Quilt Guild meeting, which I've been meaning to go to for so long. And I thought part of my issue, other than the fact that it's at a weird time and it's a little bit hard to get to from where I live, I just thought I might be really intimidated. Um, turns out that everybody's very nice. And as is maybe the case at a lot of modern quilt guilds, like everybody's not super modern. It's it's a lot of a mix of traditional and it's a lot of, in show and tell, I felt it was a lot of traditional quilts done in more modern fabrics or in solids and things like that. So the intimidation factor went down um, for me for sure. And so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna try it for a few months and uh, and maybe give it a go for a year and see if it's um, a good way for me to, to connect with some people in real life um, in, in terms of quilting. So that was really fun. And the other thing that I want to talk about is um, I want to give away some quilt patterns. So Fat Quarter Shop, they um, send me a few things and um, I'm ready. Part of my sewing room purge was like getting real about how many things I am really going to make. So I'm ready to let some things go. So I'm going to give away um, three different things. And in the show notes of this podcast, um, go ahead and tell me, um, I'm just going to, I guess I'll name them one, two, and three and tell me which one you are interested in. And if you were interested in all of them, that's fine too. And this might be a nightmare. I know YouTube has some way of doing this automatically, but I probably don't. I'll figure it out. Um, so the first thing I want to give away is the Simply Half Yards quilt book by it's so emma it's a great book it really is and it uses half yards so um so the blocks are big i reviewed it on a previous podcast and i really thought i was going to make some of these and i'm just you know there's just so many quilts so little time i'm going to bless somebody else with this so simply half yard quilts is is item number one and again when i get to the show notes this will be laid out for you the second one is the home again vintage two color quilt by um, Lori Holt also put out by It's So Emma. I talked about this one too and there was just actually I think it's still going on they did like a one month sew along um, for this quilt and if you saw people's quilts and you're like oh man I really would have liked to make that then here's your chance it's a it's a whole vintage two color quilt and it's it, the block is very cute and they she gives one two three four five six seven eight nine different um like color options that you know to inspire you. So that's number two. Number three is actually three quilt patterns by It's So Emma. It's just a little pack because they're small. Um, and I will put them on the show notes. One's called Freesia. Basically they are all um, block, block based quilts, um, often with a, um, a single block and then um, a secondary block that's, you know, like a, that makes it chain or something like that. The first one is called Freesia, which um, is a, a star kind of block and, and ha creates this cool secondary pattern in it. The other one is called Autumn Skies and um, it's also an alternating block quilt that's super cute and the third one is amaryllis which they have done kind of in christmas colors here and um yeah it's two alternating large blocks and are they all they're designed by different people here so that will be a three pack so that is number three so um again it'll all the information will be in the show notes and i'll leave it up for a week and then i'll contact you and ship these out Let's move on to cross stitch, which I don't have a lot to report. <laughs> As I've been saying for like, I don't know how many episodes, I am almost done with flea market flowers, but I really am on the very final square of flea market flowers, which is quite a large pattern. So that will be done soon. Um, I made really good progress on it last night. And then I'm excited to move on to um, the, the teacup patterns and uh, teacups and books and, and the, the tea time uh, stitch along th uh, through cross stitch the rainbow and I'm excited to do some stitching with silk floss there so that so not a ton going on there but the fat quarter shop did send me um, a number of patterns and I want to talk about those and next podcast will be all about giving away cross stitch patterns so 
Here's something that I'm not going to be giving away because I am incredibly selfish. And they are the next two of the Lori Holt stitch cards. And I love these. These are 36 by, oh, actually, that's interesting. Um, set O is 36 by 36. Set P is 34 by 34. I thought they were all the same, but apparently not. Okay. Um, I'll go in alphabetical order. Set O. So if you've never seen these before, it's a little set of four patterns that are kind of in a little, each pattern is sort of postcard size. And set O, I now know from being around floss tube for a while, is inspired by vintage samplers. So there's um, one of the, the designs is like an urn with flowers. You see that a lot in samplers. Another one um, has A, B, C, and one, two, three. That's samplers are obviously like that. There's another one that's a house. Um, and another one, that, what is that? That is maybe um, one of those weather vane things. Um, but it's so there, it's, it's very vintage looking, very, what's the word, prim, you know? Um, so those are super cute. And I am looking forward to doing more of these smalls like this um, when I finish my bigger project. But now we're moving on to set P, which is completely um, sewing inspired. There's a sewing machine is one of the designs, um, a small, like a four block quilt of, what is that, a sawtooth star. One of them has scissors and buttons and a thimble, and one of them has um, thread, little thread spools, super cute. So I am very excited about those cross stitch patterns. Now, if you've been around the Fat Quarter Shop floss tube, you know that they're doing this whole chicken club thing. I'm personally not into chickens, and I think I have three of the chickens at this point. So next episode, I will give away a three-pack of the chickens. How big are these? Where's the stitch count? Like 57 by 80 stitches. So they're a little bit bigger. They're cute if you're into stitches, <laughs> into chickens. The other um, thing that I have are the stackables, which is a long, skinny, seasonal stitch. They have one for every month. Um, March has a, a flower, and it's very springy, and a birdhouse, and a watering can, and a butterfly. And um, so I have January, February, and March. And um, these they're very cute but they're not really my style so i will definitely be giving those away along with some other things as well so those are some super cute um, new cross stitch patterns that are coming out from the fat quarter shop all right let's move on to books last episode i was saying that i was having a hard time settling into a book and i'm, I'm still struggling which is a little unusual for me um but i did start two books by trusted authors and i'm not that far into either of them but i'm going to go ahead and um, recommend them anyways one is cafe by the sea by jenny colgan now she's written a number of books and i've, I've definitely read a few i'm trying to think what they are one was at a, about a bookstore that's all i can remember but my friend patty over at elm street um quilts she is she recommended that she's um, and it's a whole series and um so i definitely started it it's about a um as far as I really am, it's about a girl that has moved to London and she works in a law office and because she sort of escaped this little Scottish island, you know, that she just wanted to get off the island where everybody farms and she's being sent back to that island for her job. And um, I don't know, I'm kind of guessing she's going to open a cafe by the sea, but I haven't actually gotten that far. <laughs> but I am enjoying that. I just renewed it on my, uh, for my Kindle app and or my Libby and I'm going to get back on that and then the other one is called Eight a Time and it's that Stitched in Crime series um it's book number 10 and um it's uh you know it's sort of you know vaguely cross stitch adjacent only that the main character cross stitches I've talked about this a million times because obviously I am on book 10 but um she her name's paisley and she is a salvage expert and so every time she goes to tear down a building a body appears and she gets really into figuring out how it got there so i just started that one but they're always fun i'm not really worried that i won't enjoy it so two really kind of um easy breezy reads so if i'm not reading a lot i'm probably watching too much television and that is the situation right now um I have quite a few things to talk about here. So the stuff I'm watching with my husband, we just finished Picard the other day, season three, series finale. So good. If you were at all a Next Generation fan, I mean, I, I think I will 
not be a spoiler to say that they get the next generation crew back together for season three. They've all got gray hair and wrinkles and it is so fun. They still have the chemistry. They're still all themselves, you know, so um, it was an absolutely fabulous story. Um, I just feel like they couldn't have done it any better. And I felt like it gave those actors and those characters a, a little bit of closure. And so um, so that was was really fun. So can just not highly recommend that enough. And then I, I might have mentioned this last um, month, but we're also watching The Good Fight, um, which is on. So both of these are on Paramount Plus, which is our streaming service du jour. Um, except it's not du jour, it's de, de whatever month is in French. Um, and that is, um, it's a, it's a spinoff from The Good Wife. So it's a legal drama. It's got Christine Baranski. Um, she goes to work for this, um, basically almost besides hers, this all black, um, law firm in Chicago. And it's quite good. Um, and so we're, we're and it's like, six seasons we've got forever to to watch this but that's it's just a fun ride the stories are good um so that that's been fun that's our our go-to once picard was done that's our go-to show um now for me when i you know start cross-stitching and then sometimes just set it down on my lap and watch tv um i finished sanditon and i talked about that last time i know it's on pbs um it is also is it season three I can't remember what season it is, but it's the series finale to that. And I finished it and it was very good. Um, I know I've talked about it before, but Sanditon was an unfinished Jane Austen novel that they found. And so um, I don't think there was too much to it, but um, the series really takes that as a jumping off point about a young girl who through um, helping out some some this man and his wife gets an invitation to go to Sanditon which is a resort seaside community that this man is trying to build up and promote and she just meets she's a little farmer's daughter she meets all kinds of people with money and standing and um, has many many love affairs and adventures and it uh, it was a roller coaster ride this last season but I felt that it was um it was definitely worth it. So I really enjoyed that. While I was hanging out over on the PBS app on my iPad, I also finally finished All Creatures Great and Small. I started it when it first came out and then completely forgot about it for some reason. I kind of forgot about PBS for a while. <laughs> and, um, you know, that, of course, is just the most charming show ever. I remember talking about it when it came out during COVID. And it was just, I felt like it was the show we all needed <laughs> to just feel good about um, life and, and the world. So if you've not... Um, checked out all creatures great and small then definitely um, go check that one out so then I, I pop back over to my beloved acorn um, tv and i'm just kind of trying to find uh what, who's got new <laughs> who's got new episodes broken wood um mysteries is back um that's a detective show cozy mystery uh set in in new zealand absolutely love it so they're, but they're just dropping episodes like one a week you know, like we're in 1980 or something. Just give them to me all at once. Thank you very much. And then there's a show that I've seen around and I tried it once before and I gave up on it and I'm back on it and I'm about to give up on it again. It's called Happy Valley and it is not happy. There is no happy, nothing happy <laughs> happening in Happy Valley. Just people are getting murdered and committing suicide, you know. So it's a cop show, not really detective so much. It's just straight up cop. The main character is this woman that she was so familiar to me until I, then I realized who she was. So if you ever watched The Paradise, um, which I'm not sure if that was on PBS or just, I don't know what that was on, but it's a wonderful period drama about um, a, uh, a department store, a little bit like Selfridges type of deal, except for I liked The Paradise as a show better. And if you remember... Uh, if you did, I'm, now I'm just talking to people who watch The Paradise. The, our main character, she goes to work in the women's department. And there's a really mean woman who runs the women's department um, with an iron fist. And so it's that actress that plays this gritty cop <laughs> in Happy Valley. So that took a little getting used to. The other thing that is so hard for me is the main bad guy in this first season is James Norton, the 
I, is there, there's an American James Norton, right? The British James Norton. And we know him from the show Grantchester, where he plays the hunky priest who likes to solve mysteries. And so he, as his name is Sidney, I can't remember what his last name is in that show, but as Sidney in Grantchester, he is wonderful. I mean, he's, he's actually, he's a little, you know, tormented, but in Happy Valley, he is the scum of the earth. And I'm having a hard time with that personally. So, so, um, so that's what I've been watching. So that, that's the, that's what keeps me company while I'm sewing and cross stitching these days. Okay, as we head into our final segment here, which I'm just, it's just going to be a mishmash of like random things that are going on around here. One of them is that um, I'm feeling basically overwhelmed by projects over here or the thought of the projects that I should be doing. So um, Francis, uh, Dal and I, we actually wrote about this. We have this blog called The Empty Nest Chronicles. We occasionally do a podcast. We thought we were going to do it monthly. That hasn't really worked out. But um, we wrote a, our last blog post was called Creating Space, um, which could have for me been called Creating Spaces. And, you know, the, the first space uh, that, that I've worked on, obviously, was the sewing room, but I didn't really mean to do that. What I meant to do was do the boys' room. And um, that has just taken so much work, and it's it's been emotional. Um, so at first we took those, those um, most of those bookcases down, left one in there, and then we took apart the bunk beds, and I gave away the bunk beds on Facebook Marketplace. That, those went pretty quickly. Um, then I had these two mattresses to deal with. One was a, kind of a new mattress. It was very nice um, that we got, you know, Ben as he was, you know, um, a high schooler, <laughs> still in a bunk bed. Um, but, you know, they're in bunk beds in college too sometimes. So anyways, we had a nice mattress. And, you know, I know not everyone's like thrilled to be picking up a mattress on, on Facebook, but, um, somebody did. And, and they actually, um, texted me back and just said, Oh my God, this mattress is amazing. Got it for his daughter, um, who was little, you know, so that was, that was happy. So now we're left with like an old mattress that I finally just called the, um, I, I tried so hard to find some charity that would pick it up. Nobody wants it. So, um, the, the trash company will come a couple times a year to take bulky items and, um, so that's going to go next week. So that was, was nice. And so the, yesterday I just got in there and it's just, you know, I've kind of learned as kids are flying the coop here <laughs> that it, it takes m- several cycles to really get them moved out. I mean, I know for some people like their, their childhood bedrooms just kind of stay the same for a long, long time, but we're obviously going a different way there. But, um, so I just started going through like the, the, there's posters on the wall and there's their yearbooks and we've gone through the books several times, but I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to put all of this stuff. And so I spent probably three hours yesterday FaceTiming all three kids at different points because um, even with Chloe, I was going through her closet and, and she's been the one that we've really probably done four passes through her stuff, trying to figure out. You know, because when they first move out, like it's not, is it going to stick? I don't know. I don't want to bring all my books with me to this little apartment. So, you know, it's just taking time to figure out, yes, I want that. No, I'm ready to let that go. And we finally, via FaceTime, Chloe and I tackled one section of her closet that we have just have never been able to finally get through. And it was like weird things like Halloween costumes and special occasion dresses and, and things like that that take time to, to you know, be able to let go. So, um, so that's been, that's been an interesting process. I'm, I'll be so glad when (laughs) these, when we have moved on, you know, past this, but so now we're to the point in the, just the boys room that, cause, um, that there's somebody come, we're having the carpets clean next week. And I wanted that room. It's a hundred, like the whole room is just empty right now for the carpet cleaner. And, um, and then we're going to start setting up the new queen bed in there. I've gotten, quotes on having both of these rooms painted oh my gosh it's been a very long time since we've I I don't like to paint I want to hire a painter even though I know you can paint yourself but we just don't do a very good job but it is so expensive to get a room painted I I am out of touch it is at least twice as expensive as I remember it being or I even I wasn't in my mind I was adjusting for inflation but no it's insane 
Um, but that's going to be happening soon. Um, I think we'll, yeah, the carpets are clean this week. We'll get that bed set up next weekend. Um, and yeah, we're, we're kind of on our way. I'm not even going to worry about how I'm going to de- decorate them until we just have, they are cleaned and painted and furniture in them. So, so those are moving on. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to say I'm making some progress there. One of the projects that I was going to absolutely let go this year and not worry about is the backyard. So, so we're in California. We've gone through the whole drought. We had real water restrictions last year. We let the grass completely die, stopped watering it, and just kept our planters alive. And now with the rains, it's all back and it's green and weedy and everything's weedy. (laughs) There's weeds coming out everywhere. And, um, it's driving my husband crazy. So we are looking into, so what we need to do is we need to rip the grass out and we need to do something different. Um, and what that is, I don't know, but I did start talking to a landscape designer that, um, works with the state because if you do it in a certain way, you can get a rebate from the state to help pay for it, which would be nice. And, um, but I need someone to help me reimagine the space with, a smaller I mean we're kind of typical it's Southern California anyways we have a patio and grass and it's all on you know all three sides or our big planters and um, one parts of the garden and just you know I kind of had it designed as a um, kind of a cottage garden which is just not sustainable here so I think the, f- the plants that have made it this far are established enough that we can go ahead and keep them but we need a design to bring in some more low or drought tolerant plants low water plants and reduce the area of grass we have and tr- replace that grass with something um that's more that's not it's not grass that's micro clover this designer sent me some other types of things that look green and the dogs can run on and things like that um but yeah, you know, what we're kind of realizing is the the work in our yard is keeping these planters weeded. And we just kind of realized, well, if we reduce the size of the grass, then we just have more planters. So is the whole thing going to be so much more work? <laughs> I don't know. So we're thinking about, oh, well, maybe, you know, you can, I, I've seen these designs. The designer told me, go get on Pinterest and start looking up stuff and to figure out what you like and what you don't. And what I really kind of am inspired by are the kinds of arrangements that have kind of like a little path and it goes to maybe a little seating area and all that stuff. When you do a path like that and a little seating area, that's like all stuff you don't have to weed, right? It kind of takes up space. <laughs> and that's, I think what I want, I think I want little, maybe little zones in the yard I'm talking like like our yard is not big but um I just don't know how to accomplish that it's like I'll know it when I see it so I'm crossing my fingers that getting a little help on the design part of this will not break the bank um and so that's my other big project um that uh that I'm working on so we'll see how those go so both of those feel like a lot right now (laughs) but there's no time limit on either of these so I just need to take it step by step so that's kind of what I've been working on and the last thing I want to say is just so super random is um I've been um trying to discover some new recipes and things um you know for our meal plan because I I really have gotten into such such a rut and I discovered something that I knew existed and I've kind of done them before but I feel very very behind the curve on this and that is sheet pan dinners so the one sheet pan dinner I've done is called change your life chicken from the lazy genius and the last time I made it it was kind of like okay Um, but I decided to make it again and as she would say it's not it's going to change your life because it's so delicious it changes your life because it's so easy and that's true even though it was it was very delicious Um, and so I thought oh you know I need to start looking into this I know there are people that love sheep pan dinners so I did another one that had all kinds of vegetables and then some cut up chicken sausage in it and then had this Um, sauce from Trader Joe's called chili onion crunch drizzled over it and oh my it was so good so I've been um, thinking that okay I need to kind of do a deep dive on some sheet pan dinners and maybe try to do one a week now that we're going into the spring and summer and I don't like to have the oven on that much but 
so this would be a better fall winter thing but anyways i don't care i'm gonna still do it so if you guys have any great sheet pan dinner recipes please drop them in the comments i would love that um, because i feel like i am just discovering it, it's insane how how easy they are and how little cleanup there is and that is very appealing to me right now so i guess that about wraps it up i haven't had any um reviews on apple podcasts in ages so i am appealing to you so if you wouldn't mind um, and if you enjoy the podcast please pop over and rate and leave a review for it that really helps other people to find it and and um and plus i'd find them really fun to read <laughs> if they're nice <laughs> all right as usual everything i talk about here will be on um the show notes and you, so you can find them at the Simple Handmade Everyday um, blog, kristenesser.com. And I'm over at Instagram as Kristen Esser. And please consider joining the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group so we can keep the conversation going. People have been sharing um, their makes over there, and it's so inspiring. And I encourage everyone to just jump in and share what you're, you're sewing, cross-stitching, reading, you know, um, watching. I, I'm here for it all. Have a great week.